Well, good evening, Amazing Grace. We are so blessed to be in the house of God. Someone give them a shout of praise in the house. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Is he worthy? Come on, is he worthy? Oh, we are so blessed. Man, I'm telling you, we have such wonderful news. Uh, the Lord has blessed Amazing Grace with a new facility. And we will, our first grand opening day will be April 7th at 12 noon at 6090 Banbury Street in Paradise Hills. We'll have all the information for you as the, the week comes closer to it. But how many is excited? I'm excited. I don't know about you. I'm excited. Amen. Amen. And so uh, this place is beautiful. Uh, it can seat 200 people. Um, it's just, it has a big, large stage for the worship team. I mean, I can now roam. Whoever's preaching can roam. Can roam around. Amen. And so so we're we are just so mighty thankful for what is, God is doing. And so I got more to share. And um, Sunday morning, you got to hear a tremendous testimony. We're going to have Deacon Angel come up and share what God has done. Hallelujah. So, we, man, I'm telling you, how many, how many believe we serve a miracle-working God? He's still doing miracles. Amen? Amen. So listen, we're going to worship the king, and then we're going to come back, and we're going to uh, start Romans chapter 4. Four, and we're going to expound verses 1 through 8. I can't wait to get into this study. And so let's worship the king. Amen. Here we go. Hi, and welcome to Amazing Grace Christian Fellowship. We are so glad that you could join us in a time of prayer and worship. Will you pray with me? Father, God, we just thank you for today. Yes, God. Lord, we just pray thank that you, you would be in the midst of every song that we lift up to you, Father God, that we would glorify you not only with our lips but with our hearts, Father God, that it would come from a pure place, Father God. If there's anything in us that you need to cleanse, cleanse it right now in the name of Jesus. Wash it away. Wash it away, Father God. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for what you're doing, not only in our hearts but in our homes, with our families, Father God, on the job, Father. We know and we want you in every single part of it father so we're saying have your way father have your way right now in jesus name amen
by might, it's not by power, but it's by the Spirit of the Lord. Not by might, nor by power, by your Spirit, says the Lord. Says the Lord, not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit. Says the Lord, let it flow, 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 let it flow. Hallelujah. Amen. Woo. How many are so blessed? Thank you, Jesus. Are we blessed? Yes, we are. Yes, amen. Praise God. Well, listen, I'm excited about uh, the Bible study this evening. So please allow me to go before the throne room of grace. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we bless you. Lord, we praise you. Lord, we exalt you and magnify you. Lord, I'm asking now, God, that you would give us ears to hear and eyes to see what the Spirit is saying to the church. And we bless you and praise you in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. And so we're going to go right here. I've entitled this evening's message, Faith is Accounted for Righteousness. So we're... We're picking this up in chapter 4, and one of the things that Paul the Apostle was addressing to the Roman church, and also us as the audience of God, that we cannot obtain any type of righteousness from God without faith. We can't work, hallelujah, his favor. We cannot do enough to say, okay, you've done enough. No, we receive the grace of God, the mercy of God, the salvation of God by faith. And this is what he wanted to reiterate to the Jews back at the time. And yet they were struggling with this. They would argue with him. They would fight him in this. But how many love God? And, and, and the Bible says, let God be true and what? Every man a liar. Amen. And so let's dive into verses 1 through 8 and just allow the Holy Ghost to have his way tonight. Amen? Amen. And so here we go. Starting with verse 1, and it reads, What then shall we say that Abraham our father has found according to the flesh? For if Abraham was justified by works, he has something to boast about, but not before God. For what does the scripture say? Abraham what? Believed God and it was accounted to him for what? Righteousness. Now to him who works, the wages are not counted as grace, but as debt. Now we're going to look at that. We're going to see what, exactly what Paul was saying here. Verse 5. But to him who does not work, but believes on him who justifies the ungodly, his faith is accounted for what? Righteousness. Just as David also describes the blessedness of the man to whom God imputes righteousness apart from works. Verse 7, look at this. Blessed are those, say that with me. Blessed are those who lawless deeds are forgiven and whose sins are covered. What? And verse 8, look at this. Blessed is the man who to whom the Lord shall not impute sin. Listen, let me just pause there for a moment. In other words, 
God does not cast any more sin upon us. We are already sinful. But guess what? Everything that God took, he took it on the cross. So God, hallelujah, punished sin on the cross for you and I. And so nothing was imputed upon us. Nothing was given to us by God that we could not bear. Just imagine if I had to bear your sin. I, I could barely bear, bear my own. We could barely bear our own sin, let alone someone else's. But Jesus took on all of humanity. You, 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 if you just take a step back and see what God has done, you would be blown away. Wow, no one on this earth, no one in this world could ever do something that Jesus did for you and I. This is why we love him. This is why we adore him. This is why we say, God, to God be the glory, because we could not do what he has done for us. It was all God. Thank you, God. And guess what? Because we believe like Abraham did, it was accounted unto us as righteous. We are righteous because of Christ. Hallelujah. None of us should walk around being self-righteous. The Bible says our self-righteousness is but filthy rags. And we all know what a filthy rag is, right? We don't have to get demonstrative up here. We know what it is. It's an ugly thing. It's an ugly thing. Okay, so let's, let's break this down. And we're going to look at, here we go. We're going to look at verse 1. What then shall we say that Abraham, our father, has found according to the flesh? You see, saints, Paul continues his conversation with his Jewish questioner by mentioning Abraham. He had to bring Abraham up because the great founder of the Jewish nation was Abraham and then became Abraham, Isaac, and what? Jacob. But Paul wants to make it clear that Abraham is forefather to all believers, whether Jews or Gentiles. Did you know that what everything that Abraham has, we have now too? Did you know because of Abraham, we've been grafted in by faith? Amen. Now, everything that belongs to Abraham and all his lineage and everything that belongs to Jesus, we are now joint heirs with Christ. Man, just imagine. How many of you have a living trust? Okay, I'm going to recommend if you don't, get, get a living trust. Get it done, right? Because that's where you establish your heirs. We're not going to live here forever. So whatever we own, we're not going to give it to the state. Can I get an amen? We're not going to allow it to go to probate. We're going to pass it on to our heir. And it's your choice who you choose. And the other heir that doesn't, doesn't get what they expect, it's not for them to determine that. Yes, hallelujah. Quickly, yes. yes. Yes, so, so just know this. Draw up a living trust. Well, guess what? What's our living trust? Jesus. Jesus. The Bible is our living trust. Can I get an amen? Right. Hallelujah. It was written for us, and now we can receive Christ by faith. And now we're joint heirs with him. Everything, everything that heaven has to offer is ours. Amen. You may not see it right now. You may not see it right now in the natural, but man, I'm telling you what he has prepared for those who love him. And many of us in here love him. Can I get an amen? amen? So according to Jewish tradition, saints, Abraham had been chosen by God for his unique role in history. Why? Because he was the only righteous man alive at the time. Because Abraham believed it was accounted to him as righteous. He's the only man that God said, because you believe, now you are a righteous man. Wow. Wow. And that's why now we believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. We become righteous, the righteousness of Christ. Not our own. And so Abraham was the epitome of what it meant to be, what, a Jew. And he was the first Jew, the father of all Jews. Abraham was. Now, we all know 
There's another lineage that went sideways when he disobeyed God. Him and his wife couldn't wait on God. And so that was the birth of the what? Of the, of the Muslim world, the Arab world. It was through the maidservant, Hagar. I wonder if they were the ones that, that made the Hagar pants. I don't know. I just threw that. You got Hagar's on? I don't know. See, John the Baptist had warned that being descendants of Abraham did not settle the matter with God. So what Paul was saying, just because you are, you, you are heirs of Abraham, you still need to believe God by faith. Yeah, that's right. That's, right. That's, right. That, that's why every Jew in Israel, every Jew in America, every Jew around the world, they still need to come to Christ by faith. That doesn't make them an automatic heir. Can I get an amen? God, God will bless their life. God will continue to bless them, but they still need salvation. They still still need to be saved. And if you believe that they don't need to be saved, you're probably in the wrong church here because they need yeah. to be saved just like us. Can I get an amen? There's no difference. But when they come to Christ, when we come to Christ, we become a brand new man, a new man. Hallelujah. Jew and Gentile become a, a new man in Christ. Aren't you so blessed that you have now a new identity with God? Woo, thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. That's right. Look what I found on Luke right up here to correlate with this scripture right up here. In Luke 3, 7 through 9, look at this. Then he said to the multitudes that came out to be baptized by him. This is Jesus. Look what he called these Pharisees. Remember, these were the lawmen. They, they had the Torah. They had the word of God. And yet, they didn't know who Christ was. Because all the prophets prophesied about the Messiah coming. And now Jesus is standing right before them, and they missed it. Did you know that you could be this close to Jesus and miss him? Did you know there's people that know your life, that know you? They see your life. They know that you're saved. They're that close to you, and yet they'll still miss Jesus. Wow. But not today. Not today. Not today. Hallelujah. Now with Deacon Angel. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, I'm going to go on record. His 87-year-old father gave his, his life to Christ today. And now, hallelujah, the righteousness of God has been imputed upon him. Hallelujah. Jesus. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. But there's a lot of folks just like what we're going to read right now. They fight God all day long. They fight God. Look at this. Then he said to the multitudes that came out to be baptized by him, you brought of vipers. This what Jesus called them a brought of vipers. Who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Therefore, bear fruits worthy of repentance. And do not begin to say to yourselves, hey, we have Abraham as our father. For I say to you that God is able to raise up children to Abraham from these stones. What? What was God saying? He said, I don't care all the lineage that came from him. They still need to repent. They still need salva salvation. Can I get amen? amen? You know, this lets me know you could grow up in a Christian home and you could get saved. You got children, grandchildren. Guess what? They don't just automatically get in. They need, they need salvation for themselves. Hallelujah. They need to come to a place of repentance too. That's why we keep praying. Right? That's why you keep holding on. That's why you're saying, God, you're the way maker. You're the miracle God. Lord, you're able to do exceedingly, abundantly above all. Amen. And many of our children and grandchildren have come to God because we've been crying out. Can I get amen? amen. Hallelujah. Don't quit. Don't throw in the towel. Right. Hallelujah. Don't, don't get tired. Look, oh, man, they're not coming and throwing the towel. Man. Back in the day, I would have said, man, get up. <laughs> but now we got to come along. It's going to be all right. <laughs> Back in the day, yeah. 
Look at the verse 9. And even, look at this. And even now the axe is laid, what? To the root of the trees. Therefore, every tree which does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. He was talking to these religious folks. These guys were walking around with pompous hats and the robes, man, and they were, they were just walking above everybody else. And he says, many of you are going to be cut down and thrown into the fire for your stubbornness. Wow. Man, thank you, Jesus. I'm not going to get past this day, brother. We saw a miracle today. Hallelujah. And so Jesus had anticipated the broader application of Abraham's faith. Look, look what was written by John here. Look at this. In John 8, 37. I know that you are Abraham's descendants, but you seek to kill me because my word has no place in you. He was telling these religious folks, here I am. He, and, and you know what really? Wanted, they wanted to pick him up and throw him off the cliff when he said before Abraham was, I am. They what? what? Blasphemy. What do you mean you were there before Abraham? That was thousands of years ago. What do you mean? They had no clue that Jesus was there. And now he's there in the flesh right before you. They didn't get it, did they? Look at this. And my word has no place in you. I speak what I have seen with my father, and you do not, you have not seen, look, with your father. Wow. Oh, my gosh. This is something else. And look at this. And, and said to them, if you were Abraham's children, you would do the works of Abraham. And they weren't. Abraham loved God. These guys didn't love God. These guys hoarded their wealth above the peasants. Common folks were peasants to them. Oh, we're clean. We, we, we send our clothes to the cleaners. You're in the brooks washing your clothes. Oh, come on. That's how they were. Look at this. Look at, but Jesus put them in their place. Amen? And Paul was trying to put them in their place in Rome. This is where we're going here. But look at verse 40. But now you seek to kill me, a man who has told you the truth, which I heard from God. Come on. This is the Son of God telling them the truth, and yet they didn't believe him. Wow. Kind of our day to day, isn't it? You tell them the truth. They go, you know, here, here's the slogan now in our day and time. You have your truth and I got mine. This is my truth and this is yours. No, it don't line up with God's word. If it don't line up with God's word, you're walking in a lie. Can I get an amen? And look at this. In verse 41, you do the deeds of your father. Wow, look at this. Then they said to him, we were not born of fornication. We have one Father God, meaning, you know, the word got out. Oh, you're just Joseph's son, a carpenter. Yeah, you, you know, and, and, and they were trying to say that, that he was born out of fornication. Wow. Wow. See, they knew his history. So now they try to throw it at his face, but they had no clue. It was the immaculate reception. Can I get an amen? Inception, man. I mean, it was God Almighty that overshadowed Mary and came forth our Messiah. But they didn't see it because they were blind bats. He called them blind bats, you vipers and snakes. Wow, look at that. And Jesus said to them, if God were your father, you would love me. For I proceeded forth and came from God. Nor have I come, what, of myself. But he sent me. And they didn't get it. Look at this. Why do you not understand my speech? Because you are not able to what? Listen to my word. Wow. Look at this verse. In verse 44. Ooh, look what he said. You are of your father the devil. What? Just imagine when he told them that. I bet they wanted to pick up a stone and just smash them to bits, huh? He said, you are of your father, the devil. Let me pause right there. Before we get saved, hallelujah, who was our parents? Who was our parents? Adam and Eve, right? And because they sinned, sin entered into the world. So 
who tempted them of the sin and who's responsible of the sin and who birthed sin into this world. Who was it? So that was our father before we got saved. And then God adopted us. When we gave our heart to Jesus, when we got baptized, got filled with the Holy Ghost, then God, hallelujah, adopted us and took us from the devil. Can I get amen? Whoa, hallelujah. We're no longer the devil's kids. Hallelujah. Man, we're heaven bound now. But Jesus told them straight out, you are your father, the devil. Wow. They didn't want to hear that. They had the Torah. They had the word. Man, oh, yeah, that's what it was. How dare you? And so, you know, we have more wisdom. You know, we can't tell someone that don't know Christ, you, your father's the devil. <laughs> we can't go that route. We, we got to use wisdom. Can I get amen? But we know who the father is until they get saved. My goodness, look at this. He, look at this. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. And when he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources for he is a liar and the father of it. Wow. The old Slewfoot is a liar from the get-go. Can I get amen? amen? The devil will never tell you the truth. He can't because it's not in him to tell the truth. And notice before we come to the Lord, man, many of us, man, well, a whole bunch of fibbers. Uh -huh. Even when we were little, we would lie just so that we wouldn't get caught. Come on. Because that's the nature of the devil. We had his nature. We did it automatically. Can I get amen? We would lie and cheat and steal and do all kinds of stuff like that. But now God has given us a Holy Spirit. He's given us a different nature. So now we, we learn to put those things in subjection. Are we going to be perfect in this flesh? No. But now we got wisdom and understanding. Now we got the truth. Now we can say, oh, God. Help me obey you now. Help me, God. Help me obey you, God. And God will strengthen you. When you turn from evil, he will strengthen you. When you don't put your eyes on that thing no more, he will help you. You don't listen to that bleepity, blap, 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 blap anymore. You know, where we used to be, you know, just roll and thump. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. <laughs> Now what we, got in our, what we got in our car now, we love you, Lord. We praise you. We just sang songs of worship right now. God has did something new in us. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have what? Become new. Wow. Look at this in verse 45. Look at that. But because I tell you the truth, you do not believe me. Which of you convicts me of sin? This is Jesus telling them, which of you convicts me of sin? And if I tell you the truth, why do you not believe me? Look at this. He who is of God hears God's words. Therefore, you do not hear because you are not of God. Wow. You see, tonight, because we are children of God, we, we're here because we hear God. We know God. God is in us. And we love God now, right? Man, this just like clicks, saying this is why they had a problem, because they weren't of God. They were still of the devil, and they wanted to kill him. Wow. And so saying clearly there was more to being a child of Abraham than simply being able to trace one's genealogy back to him. Abraham, too, had experienced being saved by faith. Amen. So we're going to go now to verse 2 in Romans chapter 4, and it reads, for if Abraham was justified by works, he has something to boast about, but not before God. You see, saints, if Abraham was accepted by God because of his good deeds, then he would have had something to boast about. But guess what? There was nothing to boast about. If there's anything that we can boast about, is that God is good. God is great. God is merciful. God saved a wretch like me. I didn't deserve this great salvation, but he chose to save me despite of myself because we was all wicked things. Can I get an amen? amen? Oh, come on. We ran with the best of them. God saved us from the guttermost to the uttermost. And his hand now is upon us. We got a new life in Christ. Hallelujah. And he loves us 
you know, he's got ridiculous kind of love for us. When, when I mean it like that, that means beyond our comprehension. That's how much God loves us. You got to know he loves you. And, and that's why he went to great lengths to die for us. And guess what? He already knew you were going to come to him on that day. So go back to the day you got saved. That's when you came to him. And he already saw you coming to him. Wow. And now we're in love with him. I'm in love with Jesus. I don't know about you. But I can see all of you. I can see in your eyes. You guys love him because he loves you first. He loved you first. Can I get him in? He loved you first. He loved me first. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. So this was a traditional rationale for religious pride that Paul expects from the Jewish questioner. And many Jews saw Abraham as being, being made right by God because of his obedience, especially to God's command to sacrifice Isaac. Remember that scene? We're going to get to that soon, aren't we? Pastor Art's doing a wonderful job with the men. But last night, we didn't even bust open the Bible. It was a deliverance service. My good, a total deliverance service last night. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. But look what Paul wrote to the Philippian church right here in Philippians 3.8. Look at this. Yet indeed, I also count all things lost for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord, from whom I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish that I may gain Christ. You know what he was telling these Jewish listeners and the people that were there at his time? He was... The Hebrew of all Hebrews. He was from the line of Benjamin. He was the attorney of the day. He had accolades and accolades of all kinds of awards. He was the man in Jerusalem. And guess what he says? I count it all as lost now. It's all rubbish to me. Listen, we have to come to that place. Well, you know what? I don't care what have I obtained on this world. It means nothing no more. It means nothing. I don't care if we own 10 homes or we ran a little, small, little room. It don't matter. Whatever we have, we count it all now nothing because now we want to obtain Christ, right? I want Jesus because he's going to take us into eternity with him. That's all that matters because this world is but temporal. So that's what he said. He was telling them, you know what? You guys are all about your religious uh, you know, connotation, and, and you're above everyone, and, and all, you, all, all that you matter was just, well, this is what the Torah says, and they had no relationship with God. And Paul said, you know what? I had all that, and now I count it as rubbish. <laughs> he counted it as poo-poo. <laughs> That's what rubbish is, right? That I may gain. Look at that. That I may gain Christ. Look at what else he says in the next verse. And be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is from the law. Because these people were self-righteous, right? He didn't want that from the law. But that which is through faith in Christ. The righteousness which is from God by faith. That's how we obtained righteousness was by faith. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. We didn't earn it. He gave it to us because we believed him. Look at this in verse 10. That I may know him and the power of his what? Resurrection. resurrection. I'm preaching that tomorrow morning. The power of his resurrection. Hallelujah. I think, I think it's at 10 o'clock. Mm -hmm. Yes. Man, I was up till 2 writing that out, writing the lease, writing everything. I said, <laughs> God, I need to go to bed now. But I got it all done because I had no time today. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. How many is going out there tomorrow morning? Yes. Come on. Hallelujah. Okay, only one's clapping. <laughs> so I guess only one's going out there tomorrow morning. How many is going out there tomorrow morning? Yeah. Come on. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. These two chatterboxes don't know all about tomorrow either. Hallelujah. <laughs> Look at this, that I may know him and the power of what? His resurrection and the fellowship of his, what? Sufferings being conformed to what? His death. 
Well, listen, this is what God is saying. We got to learn how to be conformed to his death. You know what that means? We got to learn how to die to stuff. That's what being conformed to his death. It doesn't mean, that, you know, I want you dead in a coffin. No, we got to learn how to die to things. The things that we thought that was so important, let them go now. Can I get amen? amen. Let them go. Amen. Let them go. Don't hang on to that. Let those things go. You know why? Because they amount to just beings. Nothing. We got to let these things. We got we to be conformed to his death now. And we have to learn how to fellowship even through sufferings. Can I get amen? We're going to suffer some things in life. Some of us are suffering now, but guess what? The inward joy, hallelujah, knowing that where we're headed, hallelujah, it, it's above our sicknesses. It's above our afflictions. It's above our shortcomings. It's above our selfishness. It's above our flesh. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. It's all about him. It's all about Jesus. And so saints, these characters, they believe that they had every reason to boast in their relationship with God, and they had none. All they had was, was the five books of Moses. They had the Talmud, and they thought they had it going on. And they thought because God had given them the word that they were above everybody else. But let me just say this tonight. In the kingdom of God, there is no big eyes and little U's in the kingdom of God. Can I get We're all equal at the cross. Hallelujah. Amen. The pastor, the elder, the bishop, the evangelist, the teacher, we're all equal with everyone else. Can I get amen? amen. Never, never put anybody on a pedestal. Can I get it? Can I get amen? We're all equal. Hallelujah. We all need each other. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Yes, from the law. He was the law. He found the truth, brother. Hallelujah. And guess what? We found the truth. Amen. Hallelujah. He found it, and we found it. Hallelujah. 2,000 years later, we found the truth. Woo, thank you, God. Hallelujah. And as Abraham's descendants, they believed that they also had reason for pride. They were prideful folks. Oh, yeah. Oh, look at me. Man. Look at this robe. Oh, yeah. Come on. That, they were sporting their Armani suits back then. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And these poor peasants had no shoes. Dirty feet. Oh, come on. You know someone that has no shoes? It's dirt all the way up to the knee. Oh, come on. Some of them had hole, rat holes in, and rags on, and they were above them. But guess what? Jesus loved that one. Jesus loves them. I hope you know that. When we go there tomorrow morning, Jesus loves them. These unsheltered folks, Jesus loves them. Can I get amen? amen. Don't even think once. Oh, man. Uh, you, know, you know what? All of us were a paycheck away from being like that. Oh, come on. Hallelujah. Never, never. Never raise yourself up above these unfortunates. Hallelujah. Because God's going to do something in their life. Yes, he is. He's going to turn it around for them. Amen. Some of them, he may do it tomorrow. Can I get amen? Yeah, yeah. amen? But Paul knocks down that argument by saying that from God's point of view, Abraham had no basis at all for pride, and he didn't. And to underscore his point, Paul quotes directly from Genesis right here. Look at this. Abraham believed God, so God declared him what? To be righteous. He didn't work for it. He didn't tell him to go to Sweetwater and run 30 laps around the field. I need you to do 200 push-ups right now. He didn't work for nothing. No, he just believed God. And that's what we did. Oh, come on. You know my story how I came. I came with all the junk in the trunk. And he still received me. Can I get amen? amen? He's received you. No differently. Abraham's work or obedience were not credited as righteousness, but his faith was. You got to remember, his wife even said, 
Who are you listening to? And which God on the shelf is talking to you? Because they sold little gods, these little idols. He goes, oh, it was none of them. It was the voice from heaven. Wow. Hallelujah. Woo, God. So let's move on to verse 3. For what does the scripture say? Abraham believed God and it was what? Accounted to him for righteousness. Amen. And so Paul wrote to the Galatian church the same way. To, you know, here, here was Paul's journey. He went to Galatia. He went to Corinth. He went to Rome. He went to Colossae. He wrote letters to Timothy. He wrote, I mean, Paul wrote the majority of the New Testament in prison. He was bound up, tied up to someone, stench everywhere. You know that. They didn't have the A sign on their window. They were, he wasn't in Donovan's prison. Where in Donovan's prison, they had big widescreen TVs. They got running toilets and showers. Uh-uh. He was roach and, and rat infested prison. You know, how, what, you know what that look, smelled like and looked like. And yet. He still had the joy to write about the things of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. So never count yourself short. Wherever God has you right now, rejoice. Love him. But look what he wrote to Galatia in Galatians. Just as Abraham believed God and it was accounted for him to righteousness, therefore know that only those who are of faith are the what? Did you catch that? Because we have the faith, we are now also the sons of Abraham, grafted in. Everything that Abraham has, everything that Jesus has, we have now. Why? Because since it was accounted to Abraham, we believe. Therefore, know that only those who are of faith are sons of Abraham, meaning we're the true lineage. We're not imposters. We're not from the Arab line. Hallelujah. We're from the line of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Look at this. And the scripture foreseen that God would justify the Gentiles by faith. We are Gentiles. We're not Jews. Did you know there's only two types of people in the world? We have ethnicities. We got black, Hispanic. We got white. We got, we got Filipino, Mexican, Samoan, Chinese. And the list goes on, right? But God don't look at it like that. He looks at only two types of people in the world. Jews and Gentiles. So all the people that I just mentioned, all the ethnicities, it's all clumped with the Gentiles. And then the Jews are Jews. But through both, God made one new man. Amen. Can I get amen? amen? Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Only, see, only God can do something like that. Amen. Look at this. And the scripture foreseen that God would justify the Gentiles by faith, preached the gospel to Abraham beforehand, saying, in you all the nations shall be blessed. So those who are of faith are blessed with believing Abraham. So because we believe that the righteousness was given to Abraham by faith, well, we came that way to Jesus by faith. So what Abraham has, we have now too. We have that lineage. Praise God. Man, God makes everything straight in his time. Amen. And then James writes this same thing. Look at this. Look at it in James 2.23. And the scripture was fulfilled, which says, Abraham, what? Believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness, and he was called the friend of God. You know that song? I'm a friend of God. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's where that song came from. So let's move on to verse 4 in Romans chapter 4. Now, to him who works, the wages are not counted as grace, but as debt. Now, let me go and explain this. Paul illustrates the difference between faith and work by describing the process of employment. So he paints a picture here. An employer does not call an employee's wages a gift. Instead, the workers earn what they receive. Can I get amen? Some of you that are still employed, okay, it's because you put in the time and now... The Bible says a workman is worthy of his what? Wages. Amen? But 
the gift of salvation, we didn't work for that. That was a free gift. So there's the difference of working for something and obtaining it and then receiving something that's freely given. That's the point he was trying to make with them. Salvation was freely given, but all their self-righteousness, they're the ones that took it for themselves. Wow, they didn't earn that from God. All God did was show them the, show them the word. They started their own religion. They started their own, what? Doctrine and the way they entreated people. Because they kept, did you know that till this day, a lot of them are still cliquish. You know what cliquish means? They have a little click. And they only let some, some people in. Oh, let me just say this, saints, because this just came to mind right now. How many watch Skywatch TV? Go there, and there's a Jewish messianic born-again believer named Tob. I think his name is Tob. Guess what he, he, man, it hit me like a ton of bricks. You know how we're waiting for the third temple. And then everything is going to just, the, the uh, what do you call it, uh, the Antichrist is going to come, and then tribulation is going to start. So what he did, he because he lives in Jerusalem, he went to the Temple Institute. We've been there before. It's called the Temple Institute. And they have a little office right there. And guess where all the money is coming from? us gullible Christians because we want to see the third temple built. So he went in there and says, when is the third temple going to be built? He goes, well, how much money can you give us? Wow. And lets me know and let everyone out. And he, he put it out there. There's not going to be a third temple. They're using that to get money and ripping the Christians off. So all these Christians around the world, the third temple, the third temple, they're saying, just keep on giving us money. And we'll get it done soon. They're just ripping them off. Deception. Jesus said in the last days, there will be what? Deception. There's not going to be no third temple. We are the temple of the living God. Can I get amen? You and I, we are the temple of the living God. Go back and watch that, brother. I go, wow, that was revelation to me. Because I noticed... And then he goes, yeah, and the red heifers. He goes, they come from Texas. <laughs> because they've been duped. They've been duped. Okay, for those of you that really don't know that, let me move off that and let's get back to here. But for those of us who know all that, you know what I'm talking about. Go back and watch it. It's the, the last four segments on Skywatch. Recent. Recent. My goodness. My goodness. So now to him who works, the wages are not counted as grace, but as what? Debt. So we, we explained that. We, we did our best to explain that. Amen. So let's move on to verse 5. But to him who does not work, but believes on who justifies the ungodly, his faith is is accounted for what? Right. Righteousness. So saints, in contrast to the wage earner are the sinners, the ungodly who trust in God. Did you know? Because we trust in God, God accounted to us as righteous. By faith. By faith. Amen? These people do not work. In other words, they have come to God because of faith and have not performed any rituals or followed any law. Let me ask you this. Did you guys follow all 614, 13 laws before you got saved? I didn't even know what a Pharisee was. I didn't. Come on. I came dragging and broken and beaten down by this world. And a custodian led me to Christ. I didn't know anything about the Bible. I never opened up the Bible. I didn't want nothing to do with God. You couldn't get me into a church. As a matter of fact, before I got saved, I was an atheist. 
I try to tell people there was no God. I try to explain to people, man, my brother G. You, you guys know G? We was camping in, in uh, Rosarito. And we used to bring our three-wheelers out there, all that. We were out there, and we was all tow up out there. And I was trying to tell everybody in that campsite that there was no God. Seriously, true story. And G just got saved. And he had, he had brought his Bible, man. He was listening to me. And then I remember, I went into the tent. I went to go reload my bullet. You know what my bullet was? Remember the bullet? Oh, you guys don't know that, do you? And so I was in there reloading, right? Yeah, it was a little, vi yeah, yeah, it was a vial for, for, for the white powder. And I'll never forget, my ex-wife came in. She goes, Fee, don't come out here no more. I go, why? Because G wants to beat you up. For what? You're telling everybody there's no God. And I stayed in there the whole night. Back then, you didn't want to mess with him because he was the kind of guy that if you knuckled down with him, you would have to knock him out to win. And I didn't want to go there. You still wake up. Yeah, you still wake up all tattered and battered. <laughs> and so, these, <laughs> yet these people are declared righteous because of their faith, not because of their work. How could God do this? How could God do that? Right up here. It's called grace. It's called grace. We're saved by God's grace through faith. Meaning his grace said, I'm going to save you despite of yourself. You don't deserve salvation, but I'm going to save you anyhow. What? It's like what? That, it's, it, man, it's a, like a now moment. And for 35 years, it's been a 35-year walk with him and I don't regret one day one second hallelujah it's been joyful to me hallelujah he's been there for me he has blessed my life he has blessed your life and God's going to do miracles in your life can I get amen, amen. hallelujah it's never too late for God come on dig an angel's father God saved today at 87 it's not too late because it's called God's grace. It, you know, what, where's Deacon Angel? Is he still here? I, I remember we walked into that, to that, to his room, his father's room, and I can see that Brother Angel was nervous because he didn't know how his father was going to receive all this. And he was like, Man, God. Man, God. And when we went in there, he couldn't wait to receive God. Amen. Because Brother Felipe, Sister Yolanda, and I, before we pulled up to that hospital, we were praying in the Holy Ghost. So, God, prepare his heart. Oh, God, prepare his mind. Oh, God, when we come in, let him receive you, God. We were praying that, huh, huh honey? Yes. And when we walked in, he was like, Yes, I want Jesus. I, I didn't want to look at Brother Angel because I didn't, I didn't want to. What are you worried about? Huh? Huh, Deacon? Huh, Deacon? Uh, we saw that, that, that you didn't know how he was going to receive us. You know, you, but you came in there with us by faith. You brought us there by faith. And, 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 and trembling the whole way. Oh, God. I believe in you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen, last week we read this. Look at this in Romans. Look. But now the righteousness of God apart from the law is revealed, being witnessed by the law and the prophets, even the righteousness of God through faith 
in Jesus Christ to all and all who believe. For there is what? No difference. Look at this. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Those religious folks have sinned. Hallelujah. Some of our family members that don't know God, they have sinned. All of us, us, we have sinned. Can I get amen? But look at this. And fall short of the glory of God. Hallelujah. Being justified freely by his what? Grace. Through the redemption that is in what? Christ Jesus, whom God set forth as a propitiation by his blood. It was done by the blood through faith to demonstrate his righteousness. Because in his forbearance, his foreknowledge, his mind, hallelujah, God had passed over the sins that were previously committed. You know what that says to me? Despite of all my sins, despite of all your sins, he passed over that and still saved you. Hey, come on. Man, we got a list. Hallelujah. We got a rap sheet that just keeps on going down a block. And he passed over them and saved us. Wow. Thank you, God. How many are so blessed to know that? Hallelujah. Look at this. And to demonstrate at the present time his righteousness that he might be what? Just and the justifier, the one who has faith in Jesus. Hallelujah. We got two more scriptures to break down. You still have, can, can you guys still come, come a little longer? Huh? You allow me to go ahead and teach this? Amen, amen. Praise God. Verse 6 in Romans chapter 4. Just as David also describes the blessedness of the man to whom God, what? Imputes righteousness apart from what? Works. You see, Paul, he, Paul was basically quoting Psalm 32 to develop his explanation of how God can declare an undeserving sinner as righteous. It's right here in Psalm. Look at this. In Psalm 32. Look at this. Blessed. Say that with me. Blessed is he whose transgression is what? Forgiven. Whose sin is covered. God has covered our sin. Look at this. Blessed is a man to whom the Lord does not impute iniquity. God showed this to King David. Way before Jesus came. Look at this. And in whose spirit there is no deceit. He goes, when I kept silent, my bones grew old through my groaning all the day long. Look at this in verse 4. For day and night your hand was heavy upon me. My vitality was turned into the drought of summer. This is King David. I acknowledge my sin to you and my iniquity, and I have not hidden. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord. And look at that. And you forgave the iniquity of my sin. Wow. God was showing us what Jesus was going to do for you and I. Hallelujah. 2,000 years later. My, my, my. Hallelujah. See, God had already made a road map for us. God already had a plan for us. Way back then, God is showing us, guess what? Despite of your, all your filth and ugliness, I'm going to pass over them and still save you. Do we deserve it? No. Are we thankful? Yes. You know what? If, it, if I could jump up and click my heels, you know, you ever seen someone jump up and click their heels? I can only do that. I can only do that in my mind now. I can only do that in my mind. But to know what God did for me, that's what I do. I click my heels. I go, man, God. Only you could do this. So King David had written of the joy of those whose disobedience was forgiven. How many are so blessed to know how disobedient we were? And yet God still saved you. He still saved you. We don't deserve it, do we? Okay, we're going to move on to verse 7. We got two more verses, 7 and 8. Verse 7 of Romans chapter 4. Blessed are those who lawless deeds are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Praise God. So we could go back 
to the Old Testament, we can look in the New Testament and see how God demonstrates this. Look at Isaiah, the prophet. Isaiah wrote it this. Look at that. I, even I, am he who blots out your transgressions for my own sake, and I will not remember your sins. What? I need you guys to let this hit deep. Because you know what we do sometimes? We condemn our own self. And we allow others to condemn us. And we all allow Slewfoot to condemn us. But I need you to know that God does not remember your sin anymore. If he don't remember your sin, why are you thinking about it? Why are you worried about it? Hallelujah. Why are you carrying that? That's done. It's under the blood now. Can I get amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Today's a new day. Yesterday's gone. Tomorrow's not here. We have one day at a time. And today, we understand that we are truly forgiven. Hallelujah. And guess what? When tomorrow comes, we're still truly forgiven. Whoo, thank you, God. Look what, look what Paul wrote to the Hebrew church. Look at this. For I will be merciful to their unrighteousness, and their sins and their lawless deeds I will remember no more. And we were lawful. Oh, come on. Come on. We could... We did some unlawful things that we don't even want to talk about no more. But that was us. Huh, that was us. Look at this. And I will remember no more. In that he says, a new covenant. He has made the first obsolete. Now what is becoming obsolete and growing old is ready to vanish away. So what he's saying there, guess what? The old covenant's gone. We got the new covenant. But guess what? That is going to fade away soon because we're going to be with him in glory. We're not going to be in this flesh no more. We're not going to be dealing with this flesh that we're carrying around. Yeah, we're saved. Yeah, we're sanctified, Holy Ghost filled, water baptized. We're heaven bound. But we still are in this sinful body. And we still got to carry it around. Can I get amen? But God is going to have that thing vanish away soon. And very soon. And King David wrote it best. Look at this. He has not dealt with us according to our sin. Aren't you so blessed? Oh, 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 come on. You remember what you did? We didn't deserve his mercy. But look, he didn't deal with us according to our sins. Nor punished us according to our iniquities. For as the heavens are high above the earth. Say that with me. For as the heavens are high above above the earth so great is his mercy toward those who fear him thank you god as far as the east is from the west so far he has removed our transgressions from us what you always hear me saying from the east to the west he has removed this is where i get that because god's word is true let god be true and then what every man a liar amen so Our last verse for the evening is found in Romans chapter 4, verse 8. Blessed is a man to whom the Lord shall not impute sin. Now, you need to catch this for a moment. We are born in sin, shaping in iniquity, right? But blessed is the Lord who does not add any more to us. I shared that earlier, huh? We cannot carry no, I can't carry your sin. You need to get right. And you can't carry mine because I need to get right. Can I get an amen? Well, I can't carry each other's sin. We can pray for one another and don't carry nobody else's burden. Can I get an amen? Because the burden belongs to the Lord. Cast your cares upon him. If you got a loved one that's going through something fierce right now, guess what? Come together in faith and cast it upon the Lord. Because it's not for you or that person to carry any longer. We got a Savior that loves us. We got a Savior that will deliver us. Thank you, God. Look at this right here. God will place upon us. He will not place upon us any other sin that's not ours. Because right here, and look at this, Psalms 32. Blessed is he 
whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord does not what? Impute iniquity. And whose spirit there is no deceit. And I close with this scripture in Corinthians. And then we'll pray. Now all things are of God. Who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ. God has reconciled you and I. And has given us the ministry of what? Reconciliation. Listen. Let me just say this real quickly. We are to be peacemakers. Can I get amen? Some of you know people that are not saved. God is looking for you and I to reconcile them to God. Can I get amen? Because if we put a hedge between them and God, God's going to see us. God's going to do something and say, hey, wait a minute. I'm, I'm going to bring this person. Why are you causing havoc to them? Learn to love them. They're knuckleheads all by themselves. You don't have to teach them about knuckleheadness. It comes automatically. Bear with them. Those of you that are married, that have an unsaved uh, spouse, bear with them. I know it's tough. Bear with them. Hallelujah. Watch when God does the miraculous and they get saved. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They're going to, you know what? They're going to leave you in the dust. They're, they're, they're going to go higher and higher and higher. You know why? Because they're going to realize how much God loved them and how much they were running from him. Wow. Look at this. That is that God was in Christ reconciling the what? The world to himself. That's us. Not imputing trespasses. Do that. He didn't put nothing on us and has committed us to the word of what? reconciliation my goodness my goodness saints of God pray with me because I believe someone's watching right now that may be saying wow man you know I've been carrying this burden I've been you know what I've been I've been condemning my own heart uh, I, and why for what when I can give it to Jesus some of you are watching right now and maybe you've never given your heart to the Lord Jesus Christ. Maybe, just maybe, God has now got your attention. And God wants to do something miraculous in your heart right now. I'm going to ask the Amazing Grace family to pray with me to pray for you. That you would receive Jesus. And that God will set you free. The Bible says, whom the Son sets free, is free, is free indeed. indeed. So, if you're there... Bow your heart and your head and pray this prayer by faith. Dear Lord Jesus, I thank you, God, for my life. I do believe on your death, burial, and resurrection. I believe that you died for me. And the blood that you shed on the cross will cleanse me from all my sins. Lord Jesus. I ask you now, God, to forgive me for every sin. Come into my heart. Make me a new person in Christ Jesus. And from this day on, I will do my best to honor you and to follow you all the days of my life. In Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, give God a shout. Hallelujah. Saints, it just gives me great joy once again. For those of you maybe logged on uh, just now or maybe through, the, through this message. Um, this Sunday, we're going to have evangelist Felipe Reles bring the word right here. And it's going to be our last Sunday here in our home because God delivered us a facility and the address is 6090 Banbury Road. That's B-A-N-B-U-R-Y Street, not Road, Street. Banbury Street. It's in Paradise Hills. It's a beautiful facility. Plenty of parking. Can seat 200 folks. And uh, we're excited. We can't wait. And it was your faith. It was your faith. Hallelujah. And your prayers. 
that God has answered. And we can't wait. So we love you guys. God bless you. I'm going to give you guys your benediction. And then we will be dismissed. And it goes just like this. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you. May the Lord be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his shalom, his peace, in Jesus' name. We love you guys. God bless you. We'll see you Sunday morning here at 10 o'clock.